Okay, good afternoon and welcome to this webinar about introduction to FEM design. Um, my name is Markus Mitikka. I'm working in all, uh, Finland as a customer coach and support. And in this webinar, I would like to show you three ways to have how to get started in FEM design modeling and a bit more about our program. Uh, this webinar is recorded, so you will get the recording afterwards. And if you have some questions, we have this uh, right side of the screen, we have this questions box. So you can ask some questions and I try to answer them. Okay, first I would like to talk about our softwares and a little bit about our company. So today I'm going to show you this FEM design, but we have other softwares also mainly Two of our biggest softwares are this impact for precast uh, structures and planning, and then the FEM design for calculation. And we have also have these smaller calculation softwares like Instatic, Yigi, or Dimension, and pre stress for pre stressed concrete structures, uh, Vibor Beam Energy for energy calculations, and this Beam Contact also. Uh, uh, currently, we have over 200 employees and in over 20 locations, and we have offices all over the world, like India or Australia, but mostly in Europe. And why would you choose FEM design? Well, it's an intuitive and designer focused, easy to use FEM calculation program. It's a Nordic pro product with free local support service. And with FEM design, you can do uh, concrete, timber, steel, CLT, composite, masonry, structural designing. Also, you can do the reinforcement design for concrete structures and fire, uh, fire designing for concrete, timber, steel, CLT, masonry, uh, I mean composite design uh, structures. We also have the dynamic analysis possible. Then we have the documentation module, and I will show you at last. The la last thing I would like to show you is the documentation module. And here are the module modules available, and here's a snippet of our program. But how how, how can you get started with FEM design? The first one is which I would like to show you is uh, modeling from the scratch. Second is uh, bringing an IFC or SAF uh, import to our program. And then you just use the analy uh, just analytical model tool. We're going to import this uh, IFC and trans transfer it to calculation ready. Here are the eight steps you can use in this procedure. Second, pos third possibility is to use a DVK or DXF import where you have modeled, uh, let's say, the uh, structures which are load bearing structures and the, uh, all the holes and grids, axes, loads. You can use it, you can use this DVK or DFX for literally everything. Okay, let's go and check in the program. So this is when you start the FEM design, here's the screen you get. We're going to check out these 3D structures and you can you, uh, do everything of these four boxes with this 3D structure. But you can also just buy this plate module and design plates only. We have also steel joint design. It's built in or standalone. So if you have any steel structures, you can use this steel joint to calculate the uh, utilization or the stiffness of the joint. Then you can bring uh, your own custom sections to FEM design and, and, and design them. You can also use this parametric modeling tool if you have but let's check this 3D structure. 
Uh, it should be opening here. It will first ask you the national annex, and we have all of these available. But I'm from Finland, so I will choose this Finnish, Finnish national annex. And here you can see the main menu, uh, the uh, workflow of the creating model or doing a model is you first go from left to right those these these tabs. So you first create the structure, then you apply the loads uh, and uh, create the load combinations. Then you can uh, do the finite elements checks or how you would like them to be. And then you can choose analysis. And after that, you can go to uh, whatever structures you are trying to design. So you go, for example, if you have a concrete structure, you can go this RC design. Uh, let's check, let's do some uh, fast frame here. So fast concrete frame. So let's start by creating a column. So you can just press this column button and it will automatically ask for you the height of the column and placement could be eight meter high. Then you can check the section we, you were going to use the concrete section, so it can be this 380 by 380. You can also create composite structures or columns, beams, but we'll, I will choose this concrete. And here you can choose the material. And we have this creep coefficient and shrinkage uh, factors. You can calculate them automatically with this with this tool, you just input the values you would like to have, the humidity, humidity and the cement type and the age of the concrete. You can just press here and it will automatically calculate you the creep factor. Same for shrinkage. And if you'd like to have this uh, uh, fixed base and hinged, on the end, you can check them here. So let's start by making rigid, start and hinged end. So let's say the span is eight meters by eight meters here. Yeah. Let's check the beam now. Same here that you can just press the section here. Let's say it's 300 by 600 and the material is C30 slash 37. You put the creep and the shrinkage here. Yep. And you can check the properties later on with this question mark. So I forgot to do the uh, hinged end. So I can just press here hinged and it will show you here. And last, I would like to put the support, point support here and check the properties. Now they're rigid as they should be, yeah. Now let's create the loads. So you can create the load, load cases here, load cases. Let's put structure dead load and its type is the structure dead load. Then maybe snow and then wind. Let's keep it pretty simple. So I just put some line loads here, 10 kilonewtons per meter and snow could be like 16 kilonewtons per meter and wind, let's change the direction. It could be six on the one end and the three in the one end. Yeah, and let's use the automatic uh, load combination generator. For that, we have to use these load groups. So I just press here. This is dead, dead load and it's type it's permanent. Yes. Then this could be the snow type it's temporary and here it's snow. The coefficients come from here. And last one is the wind. Here. 
And here, here they ask the combination method, and in Finland we use this middle one. So that's done. And now just creating the load combinations, generate all of those load cases. Bam! There's the load combinations automatically done. Then I can check the finite elements. How many uh, elements does this beam or column have? Let's say it's divided into five, at least. Then we can press the analysis and load combinations. This time we only calculate the load combinations. Takes a while, and now you can check. For example, uh, twist displacements. Let's put it in deformed shape. You can see how it's going to, how the wind affects in the this direction, x, x direction. Then you can check the reactions and internal forces, moment diagram or shear force diagram. But if I would like to design these bars and columns. I just use this RC design tab and press this bar reinforcement and section. And with this auto design, the program automatically designs the reinforcements for you. I just check the properties, which bars are, bar sizes I would like to use. So let's say stirrups is eight millimeters and the longitudinal bar is 20 millimeters and the cover is 25 kilo. Uh, millimeters on all sides. Okay, and just press this button and design all of them. Now you can see the utilizations here, and I can put the bars visible here. Okay, this is only first order theory, but if I want to use the second order theory here, load combinations, set to by load combinations, and press, let's say, I would like to use the second order theory in this load combination. So press second order theory and the cracked, so it will automatically check if, if there are any cracks in the column base. And let's not calculate authors. Just to few seconds and it's done. Yep, now. And now if I check the, for example, translational displacement, it here it says here second order theory. And check the utilization of the let's say this column. I can check the report. Here's the reinforcement, and here it says second order effect is considered in the analysis. So it is already being taken in consideration. And in the summary, you can see the utilization. Yeah. This is one way to get started by modeling from the scratch. And I would like to show you now the IFC import method. So you can just file and open. Let's search for the IFC files. I'm in the wrong folder. Oh, boop, boop. Now here. Now it just detects the, all the IFC layers and defines them in our Femme design objects. There's some materials which are not defined, so our program will use the default materials. Same for the sections. If there are unknown sections, it will create new. And no warning, so this has gone well. So you can see this is this, this looks fine with the physical model on. But if I turn off the physical model and take a look from the side, you can see there's gaps between the slabs. 
and the walls and the slabs are not even the same level. Yeah, and there, there, this wall is not connected to this wall. So there's a lot of problems we can solve. I would like to start by removing the additional axis just by deleting them. Yep. And if I look from the upstairs, I can see that here's some stairs and these are, these are not what I'm interested in this building. So I will erase them also. Like so. Here we delete them now. Okay, so to adjust the analytical model is based on these axes. So we can align according to these axes and story definitions. So I would like to add a few more axes here. So just copy them. Let's see. I would like to add a grid there. Also one in here, in this, on this. Let's check from the up now. Yeah. Yeah, now there's axes in all of this load bearing walls. Okay. So what happened here is now I don't have them in alpha alphabetical order, so I can change them with this axis command and renumbering. Let's start from the letter D, E, F, G. That is wrong. So that's letter H. Same for the numbering. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And now I would like to do the story definition so just press here stories and define tolerance is half a meter and now if you look from the side view we have this story definitions so we can start this uh, adjusting this model and it will begin with this adjust analytical model first one would i would i like to do is align any objects to story, so it will solve this problem that these uh, slabs are in the different uh, different heights. So just press here, choose these slabs, and it says number of modified objects four. And now we're in there. they are in the same same level. Same happened here. Now that I know what it does, I can choose the whole building. 107 objects modified. Here's one, it didn't align. It's because of the tolerance, so increase it by half a meter. Now it's okay. Then next thing I would like to do is align any objects to access. So it will solve this. This wall is not connected to this, uh, this wall. So if I look from the up, I want to align the wall to the axis number one. So here, I just press these walls. It says number of modified objects five, and now it's the walls are matching. Same for the upper upper story. Yeah, and now that I know what it does, I can do it. I can do the rest of these operations. Okay, I have solved those, but now there's still the problem that this uh, bottom edge of the wall doesn't match the slab or the bottom edge of the wall doesn't match the slab. So what, what I would like to do is fit any objects to stories. So let's choose these two walls, for example. And now they're aligned. Let's check the 
tolerance is half a meter here. Yeah, and now it works. Same for if this wall is too high, it will align it to the to this height. Yeah, and now that I know what it does, I can do the rest of these operations. And now it's starting to look okay. But there's still problems if I look from the upstairs, taking the fourth story, there's still gaps between these slabs and the, these are overlapping each other. And I want this, this edge to be along this axis B. Uh, let me check, we have a question here. Hello, are you planning to implement the Portuguese national annex soon? I have to check and reply to you. I'm not aware that we have a Portuguese national annex right now. I'll check and answer to you later. So what I was saying is I wanted this, this edge to be according to this story. So let's do that. A just analytical model, align any objects to access. So let's try this. And now the edge is according to this. Let's try the, these are overlapping each other. So let's check them. No more overlapping. Okay. Now that I know what it does, I can do the rest of these operations also. And in this slab, I want to use bigger tolerance to match the, these edges according to these B, uh, columns. Yeah, now it has done it. Let's check if we have more problems to be solved. Yeah, you can see there's a gap here. So we cannot align and fit any objects to stories because there's no stories and there are no access. So let's choose this selected object. And our main master object is this slab and we'll adjust these walls. Okay, now they're according to that. Same for the other side. Let's check. Now they're looking good. If there's any problems? No, oh no, yeah, we can align this to that. Okay, so this is the master and this is to be fixed. Okay, now it seems fine. But before we want to calculate, I want to calculate, I want to uh, delete all these smaller parts like this small part of column or here is the small small section uh, below the window or the door. I want to delete those. So when you think you're done, you can use this correct model and check. Well, it opens here. You can check the, for if we have identical copies or we have overlapping. I, I put those on and then fix small areas and lines. I want to fix smaller than 200 millimeter sections. Let's start this. And now you can see it wants to remove these small parts. It's okay. And then here it wants to remove this small part. It's, that's okay. I don't want to, that part to be included in the calculation. So fix. Now that I know what it does, I can fix all and apply. Okay. And now this looks much better. Okay. I think I'm ready, but how, how do I know this is now? Okay. I have to create the supports and test it with a structure or dead load load case. So before that, I would like to hide these axes, hide stories. Now I can use this 
line support group, make them hinged, and use this line by selection. Now we'll, I will choose all of these bottom edges of the walls. So now they all have the line support group ready. Same, same can be used for the point support group. Let's put them in the hinged. Select endpoints. I select all of these endpoints. Yeah, now it's okay. And let's check the loads. Create the dead load case here. Structure dead load and I'll put the coarse mesh here so the calculation is faster. Could be like this. Let's generate the mesh. Yeah, no problem. Now we'll check. I will calculate and check the displacements if no part is flying in the space or nothing nothing happens that I, I don't want it to happen. Just a moment. So this adjust analytical model is based on the story definitions and these axis definitions. So you can align or fit any objects to according to them. So let's check the translational displacement. Seems about right. Nothing is floating in the air or nothing bad is happening here. So I guess this model is now okay. You can do a lot of changes now. This is the IFC model. These columns are too high, for example. I want to split them into pieces. Okay, now it's in three pieces. I'd like to change the cross section. It's okay, I can just press here, change it. For example, this, change the material. Or if, or if I don't want these plates to be plates, I can change them to covers with this convert tool. Now they are covers. Check the stu supporting structures automatically. And you can see how it, how the load is transferring to the load bearing structures. Okay, the third one, third option is to use the DVK model, DVK reference. Let's make a smaller piece of this, this model. Just, just edit external reference. Then again, find it here. Just positive x direction, positive y direction. It asks for the layers. I can bring them all. And now I, they are here. Let's create the axis by selecting lines. So A, B, oh, they're numbering. They're numbers. One, two, three. Change the letter A, B, C, D. FG. Yeah, now they're done. And now I can just, if I want to make walls, just press this plain wall, story defin, uh, how high is the wall? What is the edges of the edge connections? Are they rigid or are they hinged? Or if they're something else, you can, for example, free, you can ch change them here or afterwards. Now you can just change. Build your model here. Just a moment. I'm building it here. One more wall. That could be the walls. And maybe a columns here. Could be there, 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 or there. Beams 
here and here. And then the plate, just plain, plain plate. Thickness could be 240 millimeters. Edges, they could be hinged. Double hinge is no problem if we have hinge on the top edge of the wall and we have a hinge in the plate, it's no problem. We can, our program can solve it easily. Let's make it so. And one more plate here. I want holes to be here, so just press this hole. Here's a hole. Here's a hole. Easy as that. If I want this to be a, a profiled plate, like hollow core plate, just press here, convert, change the direction of the load bearing direction, check the profile, could be like this. And now we have this hollow core slab here using the convert tool. Okay. So maybe we can use the copy story function, but before that we want to create the stories. So we can define them here. And now we have uh, one more plate in the bottom here. Now we can use this. Now there's the story definition here. Let's add a few more stories manually. Okay. Now we have this copy story. This is our source, story number one, and I want it to copy it to stories number two, three, and four. Just press here, copy. And now we have this smaller portion of this house we made earlier. I just want you, I want to show the automatic wind load generator and the snow load generator here also. So we have to fill these empty spaces with cover tool so we can generate the tool, wind load correctly. Yeah. And one more here. And now if, if I want to use those climate loads, I will, ha I will have to add these climate load panels also. So just associate to a structure and give it a point from external. You can also, if there's many of these structural elements, we can use this draw panel. So it will include all of these structural elements inside this panel. Okay. And one more to the roof. Let's forget. Now, load. and then to the roof. Yeah. Now, okay, and now I can use this wind load generator, wind speed, building height is automatically from the story definition. Now it has created, let's put the color filtering on so it's easier to see. Okay, now this is wind load. X plus, so let's see, it's from, from left to right. So it has created all of these zones for wind and you can see the intensity here. It has created four load cases per wind direction. Difference is mainly if the structure Geometry is allowing it, then the wind load in the roof is 
opposite directions. Like in this case number two and three, there's the difference in the roof. You can delete the ones you are not interested, so it doesn't create so many load combinations. And then the automatic snow load generator. We have these special cases where there's going to be snow drift. So you can check autom uh, automatic manually design these, or if you if the model has these in real life, you can press this generate edge objects automatically. But ours is just normal. <laughs> normal we just generate the snow load here and here's the snow load in the ground you can check the map if you're not certain in this pattern it might be 2.5 and we're not going to generate the drifted load cases so now there's the 2.0 kilonewtons per square meter and automatically generated snow load and wind load load cases. That's how you do those. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were mentioning about this different uh, different analysis methods or what you can get from them. No, it's from this model. Let's check. Ah, this is not loaded. I have to calculate this. So you can check the displacement. I would like to really to calculate another one. I'll open this again. No. Now I can see those. Let's say, for, for example, I can check these. If I would like to know what is the uh, maximum at compression load in these foundations, I can check the maximum of load combination and reactions. FZ minus, check the result. More info, please. Now, it, all, it will also already also say that what load combination gives the gives the value. Let's little more info here. Yep. More info, please. So let's say all of these are allowed combination number three. So there's no difference. Okay. But you can also check the uh, Displacements, connection forces between, let's say, walls, how, how much compression, how much uh, shear force there's in the in the connection. And you can put it in same color as the result is so. It's easier to check the result. Okay. And then the documentation. If you want anything to add in the documentation, for example, this view, just press here. Add view to documentation. And it says view added to documentation. And then we add, uh, open the documentation. And it's now here yeah but i have already made the rep the documentation report here so here's the documentation model 
maybe the wind loads here, then the reinforcement of some of these bars. But you can you can change this. Let's say it's whole page and I only want to show you the uh, bar utilizations, let's say, for example. Now I can check them in the in the fly. I can check change those results here. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So yeah, IFC import was one option to get started. Get modeling from the scratch was second and third one was this DVG, DXF import. And we had this documentation module. Yeah, okay. This was the last, last slide, so Thanks for participating. And if you want to try the frame design yourself, get a trial or book a demo, you can do them, uh, let's say, in our website. Just press strusoft.com and software frame design, get a free trial or book a demo or get a student license here. And you can also check these upcoming trainings. Let's see if there's English. There's introduction to English online course. You can check them here. And if, if you have, want to check also the webinars, same place. Loading, loading. No, well, in the meantime, I can show you where you can find the recorded webinars previously held. It's this go to stage or uh, YouTube nowadays. You can find all of our webinars in YouTube also. And here's the Fem Design tutorials in English. If you want to self-improve your knowledge, you can check these, if these help. And here's the, here's the webinars. Next one, English is yeah, impact. Yeah, here. Uh, new feature for usability and collaboration in Fem Design 22, uh, 9th of March, so next month, three weeks, there's a new webinar. Okay, no more questions, so thanks for participating and see you in the next, next webinar. Yeah, okay, bye.